ourselves. Welcome everyone to the Business of Property on the Property Development Australia page. How are we all doing? Uh, we have Nick Pappas from Century 21 in Maroubra. So cool. All righty, Nick. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. And what we're going to be talking about is something that's very, very unique in the property space. So I'm very keen to be sharing with the group about this. Yeah. Um, well, look, firstly, thank you for having me on, Cheryl. Um, thank you. Very, very, very excited about that. And um, look, I suppose a bit about me being in real estate for 17 years, um, have been uh, working in Western Sydney and now working in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Um, so I started my career 17 years ago in a suburb called Fairfield, mm -hmm. uh, in Western Sydney, um, quite an affordable area, um, you know, still is when you look at median sale prices and home prices. Um, you know, I suppose around Sydney and New South Wales, but um, taught me a lot about real estate investment. Um, also showed me a lot about what, you know, can happen. It's not about, you know, I suppose where you invest, it's, it's about how you invest. And um, just, you know, I, I suppose outlining the risks that are involved in, in, in investment properties. But um, yeah, I, I suppose I'm here tonight talking about um, something interesting that we've been able to come across in real estate. Um, which is uh, a company called Bricklet, um, which I believe you sure. like also know a little bit about. Yes, yes, we 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 have um, we have a project on Bricklet, but it's interesting to speak to agents and other developers who are using Bricklet, um, and and how that's being used. Yeah, well, look, I, I was quite lucky. Um, I I met um, Darren from Bricklet, and we were just having a conversation and. Um, as all good things start from a small conversation, um, Darren was telling me about this uh, platform where, you know, lots of people can buy property together and, you know, it's all on, like everyone's registered on title. And I was asking like thousands of questions, trying to find a reason why this wasn't going to work. Cause it was like, Darren, this is too good to be true. Um, and he's like, no. And I said, Darren, look, we, we need to sit down and maybe, you know, not, like over a bottle of wine, maybe over a coffee. And, you know, I suppose, uh, you know, discuss this a little bit better. So when I met with Darren again, and um, we just went through it all, um, it just made perfect sense um, in, in the sense of how it's structured. Um, there, there's really not much risk involved um, from a purchaser. Like, I suppose the risk is no different if they were buying a home on their own or buying a home with a few of their friends. Um, the good thing about Bricklet is it's already set up and I, I suppose Darren would probably be the better person to explain this, but you can actually trade your your, your bricklets as well. Mm. Um, so from a purchase perspective, I think it's also a great aspect. If you more 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 for an investor than an owner occupier, uh, yeah. but from developers and as a real estate agent, what I found is bricklet has opened up to more people for me to to deal with, and uh, you know. I'm marketing a beautiful project at the moment in San Susie, which we were, you know, discussing. And um, it's a stunning project. Um, probably not many are going to be sold in there as an investment, which is good for an investor. But it's more set up for owner occupiers and downsizers. But there's always going to be an element of purchases that are going to want to invest in that type of, you know, uh, I suppose, boutique development. Mm -hmm. And where that's allowed me to deal with Bricklet, um, you know, we're selling bricklets at the moment at about $30,000 a piece into, you know, this development, which the average apartment's worth about $1.2 to $1.3 million. Now, the, the capital growth in San Susie has been fantastic over the last five years, but also the return on investment's quite high. And looking at putting in $30,000 and potentially getting, you know, I suppose an upscale of, you know, 10 to 12% in the first 12 months, by the time the development's finished and then looking at your return i think we worked out it's just under four percent gross which is quite good in sydney you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and we are seeing there's i think the vacancy rates we looked at in that suburb were about 1.1 percent so it's quite a low risk investment as well you know so tell, tell us let, let's talk about the project um you know and the structure how it's set up and everything so it's it's an off the plan Correct. Yeah. And and how many how many units are there? So there are thirty nine apartments in the complex. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite a boutique development. Um, if you're familiar with the area, um, it's it's pretty much right on the water. The mm. the only thing separating you is the road. Um, there's a nice, beautiful, big marina being built just across the road now. 
Um, the San Susie Baths have just going through some nice renovations and a reconstruction there where the water police is. Um, the, the development itself is, like I said, set up, like we've got four bedroom apartments in this development that are 170 square metres, and that's just okay. internal space. Um, then we've got our three bedders, which are about 120 to 130 square metres internally, and nearly all our two bedders are about 92 square metres. So it's, 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 they're quite large apartments. Um, they're not small, like let's fit as many as we can in. Um, pretty much from every angle of the building, every aspect, you're going to have water and uh, ocean views. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll also have city views um, from the other side of the building there. Um, the development itself is not catered to, to more investors to buy as an investment. But like I was just saying, there is going to be an element of people that are going to want to rent there. Mm. Um, and the good thing about this is that there's going to be more owner occupiers in the building. So as you notice, when you've ever gone by in a big development, there's always 10 or 20 or 30 apartments at any stage, you know, for lease which creates a lot of competition around, you know, your property and pricing. The good thing about this type of development is you'll have low, I suppose, high demand, but a low supply at mm -hmm. any given time, if, you know, maybe one or two on the market at any given time together. Yeah. And, and so how many of these units are you sort of the agent for? Because there's 39. So we're exclusive to the whole project. Okay, um, right. At the moment, we've got 17 units available. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're marketing four of them at the moment through Bricklet. Um, and I believe we had our first webinar last week, uh, last Thursday. Yeah. And um, we, we've managed to sell, I think, six Bricklets at the moment. So, we've got, yeah, so we've, we've had a few Bricklets being sold. Um, we've really gone into a really soft launch into the campaign. But at this point, um, what we're noticing is a lot of people are asking questions about Bricklet and then sure. that's getting us into talking about the development. And that's a, another great thing for a developer because people are not only buying into your development, but they're buying into that concept of saying, well, I've got $30,000 or $25,000, depending on what we set up as the minimum bricklet. Um, and people are saying, well, if I can see value in the product, I want to buy into it. People don't care where the product is. People want to know more about, you know, how can mm. I get into it? And then if the product's good and I can see that there's going to be growth and a return, I'm interested, you know. Mm. And so what made you think, I mean, was there for you um, as, as, as the, the selling agent, did you see that there was a problem there? When I say problem, not a bad problem, but there were people who wanted to, to purchase into a development like that, but just didn't have that serviceability or cap capacity to borrow 1.2 million. Yeah. Well, look, so I, I think it comes back to the love of real estate in Australia. Mm. Um, like we were talking before, like during one of the world's biggest pandemics that we may ever live through our lifetime, we've noticed how resilient real estate is, especially in places like Sydney and Melbourne, you know, yeah. like the markets stayed quite strong through and there's still a demand for real estate. So I, I, I look at it this way and think, well, how can I reach more people to create, you know, more sales for my mm. clients. And I think Bricklet has allowed me to reach more people to invest into the product to create those sales. So I think I've opened up my marketplace by yeah. using a, a platform like Bricklet. Uh, and I suppose the biggest thing is too, like there, there are many other platforms out there, but the good thing about Bricklet is um, one, it's been proven and it's been tried, but two, um, it's it's very safe. It's just like you and me buying a property together. Mm. We'd be you know signing contracts and we'd be 50-50 shares. Do you know what I mean? So if you're paying for most of it, Nick, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. I'll go into. <laughs> I go into buy you're well worth it. Yeah, yeah, thank you, problem. thank you. <laughs> um, but that's that's the thing. You know, it's someone that that would typically, and, and I'm interested to find out in terms of your marketing to to this new new. Um, area of investors like um is it any different to how you're marketing your that individual property itself look it is a little bit i think it's more about marketing the concept of so who look it's all about profiling the buyer right mm -hmm. so when you're profiling the buyer of who would be interested in buying a bricklet um i believe it's going to be more 
you know, people that have maybe got a self-managed super fund, um, investors, and then it's going to be your investors that, you know, maybe don't have huge amounts of money, want low risk. Mm. They're the types of people that I think Bricklet really suits, but it, it doesn't only suit them. When you look into Bricklet more and more, it actually suits anybody and everybody, you know, like mm. I, I can use the platform to buy my own home in Bricklet. And then one day, if I ever want to sell my home, I can sell off bricklets, you know, to free up cash, you know, and again, I probably wouldn't do that with my home, but, you know, if I owned a commercial building um, and, you know, I've got business partners and we want to buy that commercial building, why wouldn't you buy it in a platform like Bricklet, where then if you want to one day sell your business and you want to sell your share and part of your ownership is that building that you're in, you can sell your share, but you can also sell your Bricklet to that person. Mm. So th 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 there's a lot more use to Bricklet than just, you know, buying and selling like real estate in a normal manner. Yeah. But um, the more you look into it, the more you realize its benefits. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's pretty, pretty quick take up with six sort of bricklets um, for that one property. How many bricklets are there for the average? So at the moment, on average, we need to sell about 30 bricklets per property. Yeah. But there's only been a, a week. It's yeah. yeah. And it was literally like a really soft launch. So um, like for me, it was quite new as well. Yeah. So um, this is like in the like last week, I've um, not done this is my second webinar ever or Facebook Live, to be honest. So Fabulous. If I'm struggling, apologies. <laughs> but, um, Anyone want to buy in San Susie? Here yeah, we go. Yeah. <laughs> give, give Nick a call. Um, and so interesting to find out uh, the people that you've spoken to and the investors that have, have, have invested, um, what are the sort of questions or concerns that they've taught, you know, mentioned so far? And, and, and also what are the, the benefits that they've spoken about as well? Look, I think the concerns have been um, how do we manage the property? So mm -hmm. I think the biggest concern people have is, all right, if there's 30, 40 of us that own this property and something goes wrong, how do we make a decision to actually, you know, get this problem fixed? Um, and that's probably been the biggest question that I've had asked. Yeah. Uh, also to people like, you know, how do we get our money? You know, how do we split the rents? And it's like going back to the first problem that people keep coming up is Bricklet have many different ways of managing that property for you. So you can opt to be um, an active owner, which means that you get to vote when something does go wrong or something does happen. Um, if something needs to be repaired or something needs to be paid, um, then you have you can opt to um, be a silent owner and just literally sit back and let Bricklet and everyone else manage it for you. And um, then the property manager who manages the property will make that decision mm -hmm. uh, based on their expertise, you know. Um, the other thing is too, a lot of people ask, you know, do we have to use your property manager? Um, and the answer from Bricklet was no. You can use any property manager that, you know, everybody agrees to. Um, so they're not trying to run the property management for you or tell you where you have to go with the management. Mm -hmm. Again, I think Bricklet, where a lot of people get it confused, it's just the platform of how you buy the mm -hmm. product. So it's no different to shares. If you were buying shares in BHP, um, you, you have a say, you can go to the AGM, you can sit down and have a say. You know, I suppose how much you're going to be heard is going to be dependent on how much of BHP you own or, you know, like... Yeah. MBA that you own so it's it's very similar I suppose Bricklet mm -hmm. uh, but that's probably been the major concern I think the biggest benefit has been to people that they're realizing well we don't have to look most people that I've been selling to the the, the Bricklets or, or six they haven't had to borrow money to, to mm -hmm. buy the Bricklet so they're like well this is just going to sort of you know if we had thirty thousand dollars sitting in the bank right now we'd be lucky to get more than one percent from our bank um, you know, this is already going to give them, you know, about three and a half to, to 4%, um, you know, gross return. Mm -hmm. I think we worked out to be, it was about 3% net, just under 3% net return. So that's already a better return on your money than if it was sitting in the bank. Sure. Um, there's also the potential of growth. Of growth yeah. So, you know, that's where we've been seeing everyone's been like, you know what, I'm happy to park my money there and, and, and get something back than get nothing back. You know yeah, mean. sure. And so, in this in this scenario, has a has a property manager been um, allocated, or not that's yet. not because not the yet. property hasn't settled yet. So, mm. once the property settles and we have to advertise the property for rent, um, we will then approach a property manager as we get closer to those dates. Sure. Um, 
and I suppose we're quite lucky because my company has a property management department. So we manage, you know, property asset portfolios. And, you know, we can obviously put a tender to these clients and let them know what we charge and what we do and, you know, how we do it and then make sure that they're all comfortable with that process. Yeah, great. Um, so how long is sort of the, um, is this sort of expressions of interest or the doors open um, for each of these properties to be sold through Bricklet? At the moment, we haven't set a close date, mm -hmm. but I know we're working on that now with Darren. Like I said, we've only done a really soft launch. Yeah. Um, and that's probably more because of me, because I had no idea what Bricklet was and how it Oh, Carly wanted to ask a question. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Carly. Did you want to type it in the chat as well? Otherwise, or feel free. Hold on. I'm going to unmute you. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was looking, I was concentrating on Nick. I'm going to, I'm going to unmute. And if anyone has questions as well on the Facebook group, feel free to ask. Hi, Alex, Sahara, Justin, Matt, how are you all doing? Feel free to ask questions. Is this similar? Oh, is this similar to, to Brick X? I believe it is, but the difference is that the way Brick X is set up and the way Bricklet set up, uh, I believe with Brick X, from what Darren explained to me, was that you're not actually a, an owner on title. So you don't yeah, actually trust have it's, of title. it's more of a trust. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. So this is your name goes on a title. You can refinance it. Um, you can sell your share to anybody you like, but you're actually on the title certificate. Yeah. However, there's no borrowing against the property. Well, there, there isn't, but there are, I think, um, from what I've been speaking to with Darren, if I'm wrong, I apologise, but maybe we can ask Darren this as well, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. They are working with financial service companies now that right. are going to be able to refinance the bricklet. Yes. So even yeah. though there's other owners on there, mm -hmm. you can still refinance that portion of that bricklet that you own. But I don't think it's going to be through, you know, like any of the four major banks um, from what Darren explained to me. But I'll let Darren maybe talk more about that yes side. we'll tag darren in this post to make sure that he'll answer any questions darren there we go word up <laughs> there we are yeah but um bye guys oh carly you're gone thank you <laughs> thanks for the question uh but yes there are different platforms just for anyone else um there's been break x um Domecom, I think, a few yeah. others, uh, other companies that have been uh, more so fractionalized ownership, um, where this is more fragmented ownership. And then there's also, you know, um, I was going to say Bitcoin. Uh, what's the other te techie word for it? Um, but using the Bitcoin type set up as well but the great thing is that a lot of people aren't really familiar and Australia is a little bit slow when it comes to innovation in that sense but this is something that most people understand like you know tenants in common like the actual direct ownership of property so you know um, like I said particularly a lot of people using self-managed super I would dare I, say I think this is probably a great thing like especially with what's happened with super funds of late um, you know like this is a really, well, you know, property is quite a safe investment and, and has been for, you know, many, many years. Um, you know, some people beg to differ on that, but generally speaking. So I think we're noticing a lot of self-managed super funds asking a lot of questions mm. about the Bricklet concept. And again, I'm only transacting with this through my development that I'm selling in San Susi, mm. but a lot of the people that I'm talking to are, you know, people in their, you know, 40s and 50s that have got self-managed super funds um, or, you know, the younger generation that's sort of, you know, 18 to, to, to 30 that are trying to break into the real estate market and saying, well, you know, we, we, we don't want to borrow a huge amount of money to go and buy something. I think, you know, like if you look at the median sale price in Sydney, now people, like that's a lot of money to be borrowing where they're mm. trying to sort of find their way to work into the market create a bigger deposit maybe by trading these bricklets and yeah. then able to go and afford their own home at, at you know a later stage 
So apart from the webinars, how else are you planning or have you already started speaking to investors? Is it through even realestate.com? Is it coming through the traditional sort of? No, look, we haven't done that yet, but that's that's next on the agenda. Um, what we are trying to work with, though, is the people that we, we know well, which are our landlords, our tenants. But this is a really good thing for a lot of people that are renting, you know, that think, well, mm. No, I'm never going to be able to buy a property in Sydney. This is a fantastic way to show that you actually can. So we've, you know, the phase two of our campaign is to go to our landlords and tenants. You know, landlords we know have an interest in property, and and tenants, you know, obviously need somewhere to live. But people love real estate, and it's a way for them to realise that hey, you know what, we can buy something, and you know we can put our foot in the door. Maybe we won't own our home that we live in, but yeah. we'll. Own investment property that will give us some type of return at some later stage in our life yeah and 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 you're finding i mean these sound like good yielding properties as well, well that's right yeah so what what we did with bricklet and, and darren was we we negotiated a good discount on the asking prices because we're pretty much guaranteed that we're going to buy four properties so they've we've guaranteed them for sales we've been able to get a good discount on those four properties. Yeah, great. All, All right. right. So they've got an uplift already. Yeah, correct. They've got an uplift from, you know, from the get-go, Cheryl. Yeah. So it's, um, so this development itself, people are buying into uh, an off-the-plan type scenario? Correct. At this stage, yeah. yes, they are off-the-plan. Yeah. And so it will be, um, when do they start construction? Construction starts uh, August, August 2020. Okay, so in about very very close, yeah. two months or so, and then and then twelve months from there, you know, fingers crossed. There's a bit of a months, yeah, capital growth there months at the most, but yeah, definitely within the twelve to eighteen month period. Yeah, good stuff. Well, this is exciting times because we've all got to, you know, the whole word during COVID was pivot and adapt. Yeah, correct. <laughs> that was the <laughs> that was the tagline for everyone yeah, and yeah. and this is this is this is pivoting as yeah. well but like you said you know one thing you mentioned was opening up your market to different people and i think this is where it works great for you know real estate agents as well but for people that are developing new new property and you know with the way you know restrictions are coming into firb approval that's getting mm. harder overseas buyers like this is a great way to pull money with people to be able to buy into real estate um, long-term growth has been proven in real estate so you know if you've got a small amount of money it's a great way to put it in and you know sit back and let it grow awesome you know, good stuff Nick. i'm excited for you i reckon that any San Susie project that's right. You've got, and it's only, you know, from $30,000. I'm going to send you the application form at the end of this, Cheryl. You better fill it in. <laughs> I've got to invest in my own project. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing, you know, that we can spread the risk around. So if you've got half a million dollars and you want to own a whole portfolio of Bricklet across a whole lot of different properties, it's doable. It is doable. And the, and the good thing is, too, like you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Okay. Like you could buy commercial, residential, industrial, like mm. and at, at, at any given time, those properties are always going to be doing different things. So yeah. your money is always safe if you've got it diversified in different aspects. You know what I mean? That's so exciting. And even different suburbs in, you know, yeah. certain states, but even in different states, you can buy in Melbourne, Queensland, like you can buy anywhere and own little chunks of property. And when they're performing well, you know, you can trade them, but you can just collect the dividends, mm. just like you would in shares. Mm. Like, there's no difference, you know, yeah. really. Like, I think when, when I sat down and thought about it, I, I probably complicated it for myself. And when you talk about it to people, it's, it sounds quite complicated. But if you put it back to owning shares, mm. it's exactly the same thing. It's, there's no difference. And that's been going on for hundreds yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, the other thing as well is that it's not as volatile. No, it's much less volatile. And yeah. the one thing, like, again, we, we know that, you know, with population growth in our country, people need somewhere to live. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's always going to be a demand for real estate. And yeah. for people who have to rent somewhere, um, you know, especially in Sydney, if you're like living towards the inner city, um, you know, the eastern suburbs. 
um, you know, like anywhere within sort of, you know, a 10, 15 kilometre radius of the city, there's always going to be a demand. Mm. For mm. Good stuff. So if anyone is keen, how do they get to you, Nick? Look, the best thing I'd say is um, to, to probably call me or email me. Uh, right. So I can... Send me on the chat your details. I'll add it to the, yeah. the Facebook description there. Yep, yep. Um, and where can they find out about the project itself? Um, so we can uh, jump onto our website, um, uh, century21.com.au, and just type in San Susie and everything. Are you okay for me to publicly put your phone number out? You can do whatever you like. Five, it's five anyway. that, okay, that's it's cool. all over, it's all over realestate.com and the main. All right, perfect, <laughs> perfect. There you we'll go. do that. I'll do that once once we're done here. Um, congratulations! I think it's it's really exciting to see people do things differently. Yeah. Um, because as particularly with real estate, we've been doing it the same way for so long. Yeah. Um, you know what it is, show? It's actually not that different. It's just no. the way we're letting people buy into it like yeah. we're actually not doing anything different it's just with the way we're letting people buy into real estate it's facilitating that, yeah 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 it's and that is a great thing as well because it's not too different to what we understand it's a no. little bit different because we've never thought of it of being that sort of um i use the word sort of co-investing with other people in That's property great. in that sense of people that we don't necessarily know so you do it with like family and friends and whichever but Brickler allows even further flexibility of being able to trade well the, the good thing about something like Bricklet is that it's already yeah it's already set up for you to trade where if me and you bought a property with a few other friends mm -hmm. we wouldn't have the facilities to set that up no. and it would cost us a lot more money do you know what yeah. I mean yeah. like this is already set up and if you and I you know don't like each other anymore well i can still mm. sell my bricklet to someone that knows you it, like it's just there's just so many good opportunities that bricklet has to offer to a property owner yeah can you imagine what it'll be like in five years um you know what it's actually quite interesting because in five years time like look at the growth that we've been having in real estate right um and even if we we have a bit of a slowdown but imagine in five years time like people are just buying property trading and you know like where 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 is that going to take us? Like where would that take yeah. the money? You know? yeah. I actually think it's going to add value to property as well. To be quite honest with you. Yeah. Well, we're not going to have as much of that issue with affordability then. Yeah. Exactly. Or finance, or the banks tightening yeah. up. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's just going to make things a lot easier for people to transact into real estate. All right. We're going to watch back. We're going to put this in the vault. Five years. I'll come your, back to Cheryl. 30th Maybe of June hands, in five years. And <laughs> um and, and we'll see where, where it is. It'll be um it'll be cool to be able to say that you were an early adopter. Yeah, well this. that's the aim. And and like I said, at the moment, most people that are sort of understanding the concept, they they they're really coming back and saying, Nick, this is great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is something that I want to be part of. So good stuff. Going well. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you for thank sharing. You, Thank you very much for having me on board and um, thank you for everyone for listening. No problem. I'm going to put your details up there. Um, and for anyone that's interested to find out a little bit more, feel free to bombard Nick with questions and purchases. I'm sure he'll like that. And, and you put Darren's details on there about Brickler because yes. he may be able to answer more questions than I can. So Yeah, yeah, not a problem. I've tagged him already. And so I'll, I'll also put his details up as well. Awesome, Cheryl. Cool. You take it easy. Thank you so much for being a guest and take care. Take Ciao. care. Bye-bye.